Well, welcome to Straightforward Conversation. I'm Gary Hunter. My guest tonight is Ted Jones, Director of Campus Security at Ohio University. Ted was with the Athens City Police Department from 1965 to 1988 and Chief of the Athens Police Department from 1973 through 1988. In 1988, he left us and became Director of Campus Security at Ohio University. Uh, Ted has an Associate Degree in Police Science from Hawking College and a Bachelor's Degree in Organizational Communication from Ohio University. He's a former President of the Ohio Association of Chiefs of Police. Uh, welcome, Ted. My pleasure, Gary. Thanks for having me. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk about Campus Security Forces. Uh, Campus security forces, Ted. Uh, just what is a campus security force? Well, it's uh, it's a side of the profession, uh, Gary, that uh, I refer to us as the Rodney Dangerfields of, of the profession. Uh, it's really a, a, you get no respect. Is that it's something like that? Yes, it, it's it's really a new part of the profession. Uh, Historically, campus police uh, were not creatures of statute. Uh, sheriffs were, municipal police were, you know, the marshals, uh, Wyatt Earp or whomever the marshals were. Uh, campus police historically received their authority through some special deputy commission, an auxiliary police commission, and only in about the 60s was a statute passed that allowed uh, campus police to be a, a, a creature of statute, the same as the other law enforcement. Uh, uh, si other sides of the law enforcement profession. Uh, so it's been an interesting um, uh, interesting profession to watch the attempt to professionalize campus police. Do you actually then have arrest authority now as, as uh, well, campus we al police? Uh, we always had arrest authority, but we would receive that authority through a special deputy commission or mm -hmm. an auxiliary police commission from a municipal agency. But uh, in the 60s, uh, the statute was passed which created police agencies with our own arrest authority uh, pursuant to that statute. And under that uh, statute, are you permitted to arrest, say, uh, in Athens City, or just are, are you limited only to Ohio University's campus and activities that occur on Ohio University's campus? Uh, the statute itself only provides for authority on the campus, but uh, our university, the same as most universities, have mutual assistance agreements with the municipal agency or the county agency, depending upon their uh, law enforcement agency of jurisdiction. Uh, and our mutual assistance agreement really predates that statute. Uh, it's been a long-standing practice between Ohio University and Athens and only a spirit of cooperation in a whole variety of areas, but uh, also in the policing areas. So even before that statute was enacted, which really is fairly new, it was in the 70s, uh, we've had mutual assistance agreements, formalized mutual assistance agreements between our department and the Athens City Police Department. So that your officers are able to assist us in Halloween activities or other situations where we might need extra police officers. Right. It, the uh, if you look at the city and look at the campus where there are streets that are city streets that run through the university, uh, all the property belongs to the university, but the street is a city street. So, in theory, uh, absent our officers having authority off campus uh, pursuant to the mutual assistance agreement. Our officer could be standing on the sidewalk and assault occurring in the middle of the street. They would have no jurisdiction to intervene in the assault. So uh, our officers, all of our officers are auxiliary officers as a result of the mutual assistance agreement with the city of Athens. Has the role of uh, campus policing, as I'll refer to it, changed over a period of time, even since you've been the director of campus security? Well, it's changed dramatically, Gary. It's, it's a side of the profession I've uh, watched closely, and in part, I think, because of having close friends in campus police. Uh, Bob Gwynn, one of my predecessors, uh, Bill Bassett, Bowling Green, a whole uh, number of friends who were on the campus side. So, so I've always been intrigued uh, by campus policing, and then to watch the change in, in campus police, uh, really starting in about the uh, uh, early 80s, um, started with a young woman who was raped and murdered in Lehigh, at Lehigh University in Pennsylvania. Uh, as a result of that, a, a lot of scrutiny on safety and security of campuses. And as a result of that scrutiny, then campus police really has undergone major change, uh, major accountability. Uh, that was the first instance of successful lawsuit against a university uh, for, in effect, negligent failure to protect. So as a result of that, uh, a lot of changes in campus policing, it's a, it's a fun time to manage uh, when you're 
under the magnifying glass, it's a it's an opportunity to excel or fall flat on your face, but it's a fun time to manage. You're t are you telling me that campus police is more than uh, uh, protecting the coach at a basketball game <laughs> or directing traffic uh, during uh, pre-college? It, it's, it's a bit more than that. Uh, campus police, the same as uh, municipal police, uh, sheriff's department, it's a full service police agency. Uh, anything that occurs on campus, uh, uh, we handle it ourselves. Uh, as a matter of fact, we go beyond that. We provide a number of services to other law enforcement agencies in the area. We have uh, two officers, Lieutenant Steve Knopfs and uh, Officer Don Combs, who are police artists. And they travel to other agencies uh, for robbery rapes, uh, to do police artist types of things for them. And it's one of our goals this year is to expand the kinds of services that we provide to other law enforcement agencies who aren't as fortunate as we are insofar as the talent's concerned. Are you basically a 24-hour operation too if, if there's problems occurring in the evenings and stuff? Or do you have sufficient staffing now to, to handle those situations? I would never argue I have sufficient staff. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to go back for, for additional staffing. 24-hour day, seven-day a week agency, the same as, as uh, city police and any of the larger agencies, yes. What do you think are the major differences between a campus security force and, say, an Athens City police officer? Well, I think the major difference is, is in, our, in our community. If you look at our community, we have roughly 7,000 young people who reside on campus. And uh, the nature of that population, I think, is the major difference. Well, if I want to become a, a campus security officer, how would I go about doing that? We would hire you in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, uh, one of the first things that, that I changed when I came to our department in 1988 was our selection process, a, a very thorough process uh, uh, that has produced some, some excellent young officers for us. Uh, we have, uh, of course, the traditional written exam, which could change under the current law that was just passed, but we still use the written exam. We have. Uh, Psychological Services does three different psychological tests for us. Uh, we have the physical fitness portion of it. Uh, we have the background, which includes polygraph drug testing. Uh, and then we assign an officer to, to do the backgrounds, uh, the same as we would a criminal investigation. And then we use uh, board interviews, uh, boards that not only have our officers on the boards, but we use faculty, administrators, students to screen the candidates, structured interviews, and then finally it comes down to myself, two associate directors, and some person from Human Resources who make the final decisions. Well, stay tuned. Ted and I will return after this commercial break. When we return, I want to ask Ted about whether campus security officers carry guns and uh, what his community-oriented policy is, might be for the uh, campus security. Well, welcome back to Straightforward Conversation. Ted, before the break, I was about to ask you about the ability of campus securities to carry guns. I, I think you're packing a gun tonight, <laughs> so I'm going to ask you that question. Are you, are you permitted to carry that <laughs> gun, or are you just carrying it? Well, the, the statute that I spoke about earlier, Gary, that creates campus police uh, also uh, makes them peace officers under uh, the appropriate revised code section which requires us then to attend all the minimum basic training that any other peace officer does, which is about 500 plus uh, hours at the present time. Now, the option is there for campus police to be armed or unarmed. Um, the, the difference tends to cut across whether it's a public university or private. And the lines generally are drawn that all the public universities, all the state-supported universities, will have police officers, armed police officers. And the private colleges and universities, by and large, do not have uh, armed police officers. Typically, will be security officers rather than police officers. Now, there's a statute that was passed two years ago that is starting to change that a little bit. Uh, Marietta University, uh, University of Dayton, for instance, have now started uh, uh, that transition from security officers to police officers from unarmed to armed. Do you think it's necessary to be armed? Well, uh, I think in a large part it's, uh, it's a practical issue compared with an emotional issue. In, in a setting such as ours, uh, I think clearly the, the need is there. Um, 
we don't have a large number of guns on campus, although we uh, run into firearms occasionally and occasionally come off campus to assist the city and are in situations where um, a firearm is necessary. In the smaller private universities, uh, typically uh, uh, I don't think it's necessary. It's a raging issue right now, especially in the state of New York, uh, where campus police officers wanting to become genuine gun carrying uh, police officers as opposed to security officers. But you think that at least in, in an Athens setting where you're frequently assisting Athens police out in the community, there would be a need to carry guns? Well, I, I think it is, Gary, because we do all of our own uh, all of our own work. Any call that originates on campus, we handle that call. Uh, if we were a security agency or if we had a contract with some other law enforcement agency, in this case the city of Athens, of course, if we had a contract with them to come in to handle our serious problems, um, then you could take a different position as far as our officers are concerned. But anything that occurs on campus, we respond to it. Have you moved into a, a realm of where you're doing community-oriented or policing? We're, uh, we're just kind of starting that. Uh, community policing, um, uh, our profession, the same as your profession and, and all the others, uh, go through trends and changes. And community policing uh, is kind of a return to where we were in, uh, in the 60s. Uh, uh, police agencies working closely with their community a better version of the 1960 version, but kind of a return to that. And, and the, the concept, the philosophy, is the law enforcement agency working in partnership with its community, partnership with individuals, partnership with organizations, closer partnershiping with, um, and not just dual partnerships, uh, working in partnerships, perhaps the law enforcement agency with a senior citizens group, with the law director's office, for instance, to handle a specific problem teach people how to protect themselves in a large part is, is the philosophy. The, our department uh, uh, hasn't been into that. Uh, philosophically, uh, we've been aligned with community policing, but uh, at the same time to say that we were actively practicing that uh, only starting this year. What about the, the, the escort program for students? Did you institute that or is that, do you think that's a useful program or, or at least describe it for our listeners what it is? Well, the program was brought from Kent State University. Uh, Joel Rudy came from Kent uh, uh, about 75, 76 and a couple of programs jo Joel brought to uh, uh, Ohio University, Joel being Dean of Students, Vice President, Dean of Students. Uh, one was the security aid program and the other was the escort service. Now the concept was to use um, student volunteers to escort persons on foot uh, from points on campus to points on campus. Seeing the need to expand that program, uh, we took over managing that program in September of 1991. And uh, among the things we've done is to put a vehicle into that program. We now escort not only to points on campus, but from on campus to places as far as Carriage Hill, for instance. The, um, we've increased the usership from about 1,500 to last year we had over 4,000 persons who took advantage of the escort service. We have a new dimension starting uh, uh, hopefully in about three weeks. We're, uh, we've always been concerned that the escort van does not allow us to transport persons who are physically challenged. So starting in about three weeks, we'll incorporate into the escort service a lift-equipped vehicle and we're going to take even that a step further. Uh, a number of our students have, have either temporary or permanent mobility uh, problems, have a difficult time getting to class or getting to Alden. So we're going to start during the day having that lift equipped van available with student drivers. And we'll actually pick the student up at his or her residence hall and take them to their class. Uh, so we're really excited about that. Uh, it allows us to bring the uh, escort service into ADA compliance and will allow us to uh, better assist our physically challenged students. How do you build, feel about uh, the philosophy that I'm going to refer to as being student friendly or community friendly in your approach to law enforcement? And by that what I mean is uh, 
that you look first to diffuse the situation to resolve the conflict on a peaceful, amiable manner rather than arrest as the uh, solution to the problem and arrest as the, the last resort for you. Is that basically uh, a trend or a philosophy that you're using now in the uh, campus security area or are you using the traditional uh, potential arrest first uh, uh, mean attitude uh, of a police officer? Well, th that philosophy has has been my philosophy when I was with the city of Athens, and mm -hmm. and I took that philosophy to the university. Uh, the first thing that good law enforcement agencies, good professional agencies, attempt to do is ensure that the incident doesn't occur. Period. And there are a variety of things that you can do in terms of relationship building, in terms of the partnershiping I spoke about. In a large part, assaults will stem from alcohol use, alcohol abuse. So we work directly with the health and wellness people to try to reduce the incidence of uh, alcohol abuse. Once an incident occurs, then I think law enforcement oftentimes loses sight of why we enforce the law. I think all too often we enforce the law purely because it's the law. We fail to understand that there's a goal we're attempting to achieve and that goal should be to bring about acceptable conduct. If we haven't been successful in deterring the first incidents of inappropriate conduct, can we react in a fashion that will reduce the probability of subsequent inappropriate conduct by that individual? So we do a variety of things. Uh, uh, one of the things, and we're not doing as much of it as, as I hope to do in the future, uh, have our officers schedule follow-up meetings with the student. We have six months to implement criminal uh, sure. prosecution if we want. Schedule a meeting subsequent to the initial contact, chat with the student when he or she is in, in their norm, find out what motivated them to engage in the inappropriate conduct, and make the decision at that point. Uh, utilize the referral program, uh, university judiciaries. Uh, Rich Carpinelli, uh, director of that program, does an excellent job at working with the students, making a determination of uh, what prompted the conduct. And oftentimes that's some uh, alcohol uh, substance abuse problem. It may be an attempt to deal with a long distance relationship, a whole variety of things. Look at the individual, make a judgment that is best for that individual. And that, very, that does not mean that it may not be prosecution. It may very well be. But at least let's try to determine what we're trying to accomplish when we get in the enforcement arena. And let's don't rule out some type of alternate disposition. Well, stay tuned. And Ted and I will return after this commercial break. When we return, I want to ask Ted how he's meeting the challenge of professional recognition for campus police. Welcome back to Straightforward Conversation. Ted, before the break, I was about to ask you about how you meet the challenge of professional recognition for a campus police force. What are you doing to cause people to recognize you in a very professional manner anymore? Well, the first thing, Gary, you have to be professional. And unless you uh, can say in your own right that you are professional, and that talks about a whole variety of things, the, your attitude, your demeanor, your philosophy, your values, your principles, all those things that you should The way bring. you dress. A whole variety of things. Uh, once you, in your own mind, you're satisfied that you are professional and we're there, uh, now we're starting to market ourselves. Uh, we're starting to um, uh, tell people the kinds of things that we do. Uh, We've, uh, we think we're one of the best kept secrets in Southeast Ohio so far as the uh, level of talent that, that our officers have and, and the other things that we're doing. I mentioned earlier providing some expertise to the um, uh, uh, other law enforcement agencies. Uh, a couple of weeks ago we hosted a, uh, the Attorney General's Office, the Office of Criminal Justice Services and uh, Department of Public Safety uh, hosted them on campus to, so law enforcement agencies could come in and talk about funding. Uh, the 22nd of, uh, of March, we're hosting the Attorney General's Office with their victims person here so that uh, regional people can come here and uh, uh, get a better sense of funds that are available for victims. Uh, the other thing we're doing is, uh, again, marketing ourselves. We just started the um, 
rape aggression defense program, one of the lead programs nationwide that teaches women uh, how not to be victims of sexual assault. It includes uh, officers and the students, uh, cl uh, students in the class, uh, using the uh, body suit similar to what a, a goalie would be in a hockey court to teach women that it's okay to hit people. And uh, we have four officers uh, working that program now. We have uh, two officers who are exceptionally, exceptionally talented with crime scene photography. Uh, it's a, we feel we've professionalized ourselves and now it's a matter of marketing ourselves. And I think you'll see a number of uh, uh, news releases, a number of programs uh, that we talk about publicly to tell people just uh, uh, what the Ohio University Police Department is. Do you think this is a natural niche for campus securities to, to move into the educational arena because you have those kind of resources available to you at university campuses and facilities to, to do those things and ability to market yourself that way? Certainly. I, I think it's a, it gives us uh, some advantages there. The whole notion of the education and the education benefit area we've used to our advantage to um, uh, recruit persons, young persons who want to uh, either finish their undergraduate program or start their graduate program. We're looking at, um, we're recruiting actively from the student body now. Uh, five of the last seven we've hired uh, are former o, uh, OU graduates. Uh, officers that we recruit, especially if they're married and have families, uh, the education benefit is an excellent benefit for them. What kind of expertise do you have on board right now? You talked a little bit about uh, uh, police artistry and so forth. Do you have, what other things do you have out there and expertise to offer and that you've developed on campus? Well, one of the things that uh, we hope to be able to do in the future, uh, Lieutenant Chris Johnson is our traffic safety person. Chris teaches, is certified to teach defensive driving by the Training Council in Ohio. Chris teaches our uh, officers. He teaches university employees. We hope to expand that to uh, other areas in the community. If there's an interest to utility companies, for instance, uh, give them that expertise. We have an officer that we're sending away to uh, arson school now. Uh, we have an officer that's in uh, Louisville, Kentucky this week to upgrade his skills and the concept called crime prevention through environmental design or SEPTED. That will give us three officers who have, are just exceptionally talented in the notion of looking at facilities, looking at landscape and looking at lighting conditions and make recommendations on what uh, should occur to ensure that uh, there's not a level of victimization occurs because of inappropriate lighting or landscaping. They, um, those three officers just completed a, a review of all of our residence halls and they're now working on the ridges and, and working on the academic uh, administration buildings. So, and, and on and on, just a whole variety of, uh, of genuine experts within the department right now. And you'd make those available beyond just the university campus to say the city of Athens or the Athens Sheriff's Department if they were to ask for them? We haven't the SEPTED officers yet. Um, they have quite a lot on their plate right now. Uh, they haven't completed uh, uh, Ohio University uh, yet, uh, including we have five regional campuses that we service. And uh, we want to do the SEPTED uh, review for all five of our regional campuses. And once we complete that, then uh, we intend to make that service available to uh, uh, City of Athens or, or other municipal governments. When we think of law enforcement, police forces in particular, the image is conjured up of a male six foot, 220 pound individual. Um, is that still the concept uh, that's there, uh, both in terms of physical size and stature and in terms of sex? I would have had a little difficulty making it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it, it's ironic you, you raised that issue, Gary. I almost did not get hired in 1965 because I wasn't big enough in the, in the eyes of the, uh, the gentleman who was chief back then. Uh, it's a little difficult to stereotype law enforcement anymore. Uh, we have um, three female uniform officers on our department. We have uh, some officers my size. We have some officers who are, are big guys. And uh, uh, that has ceased to be the key to selection of law enforcement officers. Do you need to be physically fit? Do you need to be capable of taking care of yourself, subduing persons? Uh, obviously you do. Uh, but does that mean that the profession excludes 
persons uh, that are my size? Certainly it does not. Does it mean it excludes females? Certainly it does not. Does it mean it excludes minorities? Certainly it does not. And we hope to, we think our department is a witness to that. Well, thank you, Ted. This has been a straightforward conversation with Gary Hunter. And good evening.